Hello everybody, this is Howie Hawkins. I'm in Kyiv in Ukraine and I'm here with Svetlana Romanko, who is really a world famous climate activist. I marched with her at the climate march in New York City and some pretty prominent people came up to her, like people we know, Bill McKibben and Naomi Klein, and climate activists from Africa and Europe and Latin America, Mary Robinson, the former president of Ireland, um, and we were marching with the indigenous, and uh, Svetlana had a traditional Ukrainian shirt on, and mostly American Indians around her, but you know, she's got dark hair, dark eyes, and they were looking at her like, what tribe is she from? And one of them asked me, I said, she's from Ukraine. And she said, oh, land back, which you know is the slogan of American Indians now, in terms of getting justice uh, from the system. So uh, I'm really glad we can interview Svetlana here about uh, climate issues and uh, issues about Ukraine. So I'm going to stop this and then turn it around and start talking to Svetlana. I, I should add that if the music you hear is, we're in a Crimean Tatar restaurant. So I think that banner behind me on the left is uh, indigenous to the Crimean Tatars, as the music is that you hear in the background. So this is Svetlana Romanko, and, and the first question I want to ask is, we're sitting here right after we've got the shocking news that Donald Trump's going to be the next president and may have certainly the Senate and maybe the House. Um, so you're speaking to Americans and you've been campaigning for stronger fossil fuel sanctions on Russia and support from the people around the world for Ukraine's struggle for national liberation. So, you know, what are your thoughts on today? And, uh, you know, what do you, want, what do you want to say to Americans about particularly the sanctions question, which is central to the work you're doing? Oh, yes. Thank you so much, Holly. And such a pleasure to meet you here in Kyiv because we marched uh, shoulder by shoulder just a year ago uh, during New York Climate Week. And we tried to bring the message that uh, the fossil fuel dictatorship must end and stop enslaving their whole nations and providing lots of, gri of grief and uh, uh, losses for the families across the globe, including Ukraine, of course, because Russian war in Ukraine has reached to its third year, and I can tell it's been extremely hard. And I think um, that, yes, the election's outcome is completely um, completely surprising, and um, I would just ask what made, I'll just ask a question, what made uh, Americans uh, wanting Trump uh, to get into power again? It might be difficult, difficult response to this question because uh, the cost of living crisis, energy insecurity, lots of conflicts across the globe, and uh, lack of access to the basic services. Yes, this is all true, but I think we have so much in common. Um, and here in Ukraine, we also have lost uh, access to many of uh, goods and rights, and um, it's going to exacerbate. Uh, and my call on the Americans will be not to give up, even if you vote differently, because America is still a democracy and we hope will stay so but also to be proactive in helping the nations who are suffering, uh, helping Ukraine. Oh, we know and we so much appreciate that many of you have helped. You invested a lot of your time and resources and political support into us being sustained and being able to oppose the horrific war um, of Russians here in Ukraine. And unfortunately, yes, we are not there at the point of the win, but the crisis of peace is the most common uniting reason for us to stay together and to share the past towards a better future. For that, I would ask you to sign on our political demands to the governments, including to the US government, but also J7 governments, to tighten the sanctions on Russian fossil fuels, because they are the root cause of the, of the crisis we are all in. They are the root cause of the crisis of energy security that you experience, pain, uh, paying the huge bills for electricity and paying extra for for the petrol and of course we can all feel that pain and feeding families but until we get a commonly agreed peace not violent peace not forced peace 
and not making us, a sovereign nation, make any deals with Putin and Russia giving up territories. Just imagine one of your states could be taken by someone who has maybe more military power and is allowed to do so by the global uh, leaders. It would be absolutely, absolutely unacceptable situation. So this is for us, for Ukrainians, and we just call, call on you, please help us to defeat the Putin's evil, Russian evil, support our political demands, volunteer for Ukraine cause when you can, and help us to sustain non-violent peace and, uh, uh, within our borders as a sovereign nation. Yeah, I would remind people that maybe are squeamish about sending arms to Ukraine that they're nonviolent actions, like under under or defunding the Russian military machine with these sanctions on oil, gas, and coal. Well, and we we advocate for uh, exactly defunding Russia fossil fuel profits because they will simply run out of money and won't be able to fund their military power, including buying weapons from uh, North Korea, buying soldiers from North Korea. So there are different ways we can do it. And we just came from the Washington a month ago with a delegation of 18 Ukrainian mayors who brought their renewable energy plans. And they were asking the US government's uh, officials, uh, developing programs they met with to sustain at least 30% of the costs they are sending as an aid to Ukraine for renewable energy deployment. Because the winter here, including in Kyiv, is going to be extremely hard. Uh, given that lots of, like the most of our energy infrastructure has been inevitably destroyed by Russians, we uh, might run out of power for even 20 hours. So this is a very light death and survival issue. So we need everything that can help Ukraine at the moment. And we are asking for, especially for helping the cities to rebuild on renewable energies, not on nuclear, which is also forced by in a way by um, the U.S. money and U.S. Uh, U.S. support, financial support, but this technology, given it um, really uh, unsafety for the population and that a few our nuclear power plants are still under occupation, it can be completely, it can be taken as safe technology to, to implement for the years ahead. And of course, the last thing which we need, and I just spoke today to my Ukrainian colleagues who agree with me that tightening sanctions on Russian fossil fuel is a paramount issue of today, and we have all to invest in this as much as we can. So as soon as new Congress uh, will uh, take in the power on the hill, we will be there asking them doing political advocacy and asking them to tighten sanctions and uh, because it's not only Ukrainian cause, which is Ukraine is a far, we understand this, but it's also a cause for uh, U.S. own national security and energy security. So there's three things we can do. Push for the fossil fuel sanctions on Russia, tell the U.S. to stop pushing nukes on Ukraine, and instead develop renewables. Absolutely. And you want to say a few more words about the renewables in terms of why they're they're more secure than these centralized power plants, whether they're nuclear or thermal? Uh, yes, our team has done brilliant work on this, especially the Ukrainian part uh, of the team. And they said once um, that uh, renewable energy is distributed. This is a true uh, energy of independence, and it can't be destroyed by a single drone if it's installed in many houses. And these houses became independent, and, and uh, they gain energy independence. And Or even if we have five houses, and we have microgrid, and we save money, and we install one set of equipment to generate renewable power, it's still so much value in that, because the what Russia is trying to do, they try to inflict the attacks on existing centralized energy infrastructure. As, as more centralized energy infrastructure we renew, rebuild, invest money into that, the more it will be destroyed because it's an easy target 
for for uh, Russia. As Bill McGibbon once said, um, he is a great supporter of the work that we are doing, and we are so grateful to him. He said once that Russia can't destroy they can't destroy sun and wind. It's free, and it's always will be free, and no dictator can destroy sun and wind. So we have to use their power as much as we can to sustain our communities and to make them energy independent. And those cities I mentioned from Kiev to Mariupol, uh, they have made as very concrete plans of how much of renewable energy facilities they want to build, how much investment they need, and they are on the way of changing their energy future. So you mentioned the study, your group is Razum We Stand. Tell people how they can find the website and those studies. Uh, yes, uh, we have plenty of important reports um, that came out recently. Uh, I would encourage you to visit our website, razumwestand.com, and to read all those reports, especially uh, if you would like to see the Arctic report, which is one of the latest. and. Uh, you will be shocked by the fact that Russia controls 90% of Arctic reserves or of oil and gas. And if they are explored, if they are extracted from the from the earth, they could they, like we can leave any hope for keeping um, in 1.5 percent of uh, climate climate crisis um, aligned. No way this has happened because. 80% of gas and 60% of oil Russia is extracting from Arctic and uh, uh, we can call it diffusing Russian carbon bombs in the Arctic that could save this planet. But this of course could not happen and would not happen without the US support. So uh, US, US uh, elected, newly elected government will have to will have to tighten sanctions on Ar Arctic LNG uh, too of Russia but not only for all Arctic activities in, uh, that Russia is providing um, in that in that area because that's where the mighty is. Is there anything else you'd like to say before we wrap this up to Greens and lefties in, in well, the United States? You know, it's extremely, yeah, I would love, thank you, Howie, for this opportunity. And uh, what I would say, yeah, it's very easy to get discouraged, but we can't afford the luxury of being upset. <laughs> so it's not for us. It's not something that we can live with. Uh, the best thing we can do right now is to be really practical, to support each other, to see how we can help our countries to get into the better political path than they are and to see what we can extract from this very bad political situation. But um, as, much we, as much as we remain connected um, in solidarity and supporting each other, I think we can uh, we can be much more beneficial for the planet, climate, and for peace than we are. Uh, so just and being politically active is extremely important. So when you see call to action, call to help, call to sign on, call to speak up, call to tell your deputy to MP or, or or your senator about something you want to get fixed. Please do it. Please do, don't be inactive because that's the worst thing that can happen to us all, become indifferent, inactive uh, and not interested. I think it's a great message to end on given what happened in the election yesterday. So thank you, Susanna. And I would like to end with a very patriotic thing. Thank you so much, Howie, because I just forgot to add it, but I will always say the Slava Ukraini, uh, Slava Ukraini, which means glory to Ukraine and uh, glory to America uh, for the overall support that you have provided. I truly believe it's not the end and we have to remain hopeful and very, very proactive and determined to end the world evil and Putin's evil and um, to restore the just peace. Okay, thank you. Thank you.